Welcome back. All right, so uh, there are some players who play in the NHL who have a talent level that goes well above and beyond the stats they put up offensively in the NHL. I present to you Pat Flatley. Or Patrick Flatley, when I searched him on Google, I got Pat, and I'm like, whoever called him Patrick Flat Pat Flatley is what we always called him. He was a number 21 pick in 1982, and at the time he came into the NHL, I was like, are you serious? They have another one, and this is when Pat Lafontaine was coming in, so the two Pats. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, so the Islanders have had this dynasty, and now they're getting good young players to come in. Uh, he is known as the chairman of the boards. This is what is on his, I believe, Hall of, Hall of Fame plaque with the New York Islanders. And hey, full-on shout-out to the New York Islanders uh, X or Twitter account, whatever you want to call it, the social media thing that that's there and everybody's on. Uh, for highlighting Flatley, and I was like, you know what? I haven't talked about Flatley, and I should. So he came into the came into the league in 83-84, uh, 16 games played, two goals, seven assists, nine points. He came in at the end of the season because he had been a part of the Canadian Olympic team in 1984, really wanted to play, and he got a chance to do so. Uh, then he's part of the last time that the New York Islanders go all the way to the Stanley Cup final. 21 games, nine goals, six assists, 15 points. Again, as a fan at the time, all I kept thinking was, great, the Islanders have more. Because they had LaFontaine, they had Flatley, and I was like, so they're just going to be awesome forever. Now, it didn't happen that way, but it looked like it could, right? 84-85, he plays 78 games, 20 goals, 31 assists, 51 points. So again, projecting in the right, way, right uh, direction. Uh, four games in the playoffs, just the one goal. So this is where the Islanders start to have their struggles in the playoffs, which makes sense. They had won 19 rounds in a row. They were gassed. They had played an extra season worth of playoff games. 85-86, 73 games, 18 goals, 34 assists, 52 points for Flatley. Uh, in the playoffs, he plays just the three games, no points that year. 86-87, plays 63 games, 16 goals, 35 assists, 51 points. In the playoffs, he adds three goals, two assists for five points in 11 games. Now, one thing with a player who is known for board play, known for being physical, they're probably going to get hurt. And we start to see seasons where he's playing a lot less than the full 80 game schedule and the way that he plays the game that's going to happen so starting at 87 88 40 games nine goals 15 assists 24 points we're also getting into an era where the new york islanders are no longer the team that they were so 87 of course that's the year of the easter epic where lafontaine gets that goal from the point past bob mason flatly a part of that team but again the islanders were falling off after that 87 run 88-89, he plays 41 games that year, 10 goals, 15 assists, 25 points. Remarkably consistent for two half seasons that he played there, but that's a lot of games missed, right? Uh, so 89-90, he bounces back a bit, 62 games played, 17 goals, 32 assists, 49 points. He has a very good wrist shot, he's a good, pro good points producer, but he's better in the corners. So one reason that he ends up scoring less is because he's a tenacious checker along the boards. That's his best place. So he's more likely to be passing it to somebody in front of the net rather than being the guy at the net. So in the playoffs in 1990, he plays five games and has three goals. Again, he's a good goal scorer when need be. 90-91 uh, plays 56 games that season, 20 goals, 25 assists, 45 points. So when you look at it from a points per game perspective, again, really strong season, but he only plays the 56 games. 91-92, he only plays 38 games that year. 8 goals, 28 assists, 36 points. So he's missed all kinds of games, and, you know, the question could be asked of, is he ever going to play a full season? He answers that in 92-93. 80 games, so he plays the full schedule for the first time in his career. 13 goals, 47 assists, 60 points. The 47 assists, easily a career high. Same for the 60 points. And in the playoffs, that's the year that all of the third-place teams end up coming out of their divisions, including the Islanders. Uh, 15 games in those playoffs, two goals, seven assists, nine points. And part of a huge upset to get to that conference final where they lost against the Montreal Canadiens. He was eighth in Selkie voting that year. I'm a little bit surprised he's not top 10 in Selkie voting more often. However, uh, when you have a player who's playing 40, 41, 38, 56 games, 63 games here, he's not going to get as noticed uh, during the Guy Carboneau era as he otherwise might have, right? 
So 93, 94, 64 games, 12 goals, 30 assists, 42 points. So the points production stays pretty consistent for flatly. 94, 95, this is a lockout shortened season, 45 games, seven goals, 20 assists, 27 points. Uh, 95, 96, what would prove to be his final year with the New York Islanders, 56 games, eight goals, nine assists, 17 points. So the Islanders are going through some stuff and he ends up going onto the market. Now, September 26th of 1996, he does the unthinkable. He was the team captain for the New York Islanders since 1991. And he signs with the New York Rangers. Yeah, that was um, that was a surprise. Plays 68 games for the Rangers in what would be his only year with the New York Rangers. 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. In the playoffs, no points in 11 games. My guess is that as an Islander at heart, once he got to the playoffs as a Ranger, just he couldn't do it. Just the idea of just, I, I, I can't. I can't get points for the Rangers. Like, it just the, the Islander in him takes over, right? At any rate, all kidding aside, he plays 780 games in his career, 170 goals, 340 assists, 510 points. In the playoffs, he plays 70 games, adds 18 goals, 15 assists for 33 points. And one thing that the Islanders who played with them said was they play keep away in practice, and once Flatley had it, you weren't getting it back. And not only that, but he would, during a game, be against two guys against the boards, and he would come away with the puck every time. Uh, he was famous after throwing a huge hit on Barry Beck, and Barry Beck was a big defenseman who could hit for the Rangers. So if you drill drill a New York Ranger into the boards and leave him kind of a little shaky and needing some help off the ice, you have now endeared yourself to New York Islander fans. I don't think that has changed either. So he was named captain in 1991. He kept that right through until he ended up joining the New York Rangers, and he was the first former team captain of the New York Islanders to be a team to, to play for the New York Rangers. Um, and again, joined the Islanders after playing for Team Canada at the Olympics in 1984. So solid career, again, chairman of the boards, and kudos to the Islanders and their X Twitter, X X Premium, X Twitter account uh, for hey, you know, making me say, hey, Pat Flatley, need to do a career video, and here it is. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding Patrick Flatley, or Pat, as everybody always called him. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.